Inside the last 60 minutes of the Sportsmax Zone for this Tuesday, we are back and we are going to talk some cricket that I guess many of you don't want to hear too much about. But Pakistan beat West Indies by 109 runs in the second test at Sabina Park in Kingston uh, to tie the two-match series at one win apiece. Resuming the day on 49 for one and still needing a further 280 runs to win, the West Indies were dismissed for 219 in the evening session with pacer Shaheen Shah Afridi being the pick of the wicket takers with four for 43. Scores in the match, Pakistan 302 for nine declared and 176 for six declared. The West Indies 150 and a 219. Speaking after the match, the West Indies captain Craig Brathwaite blamed his team's poor batting for the defeat. He said, test cricket is never easy. All the guys uh, technically can bat. It's all mindset. First 30 balls is always the roughest period and finding out ways through that phase is key for us. I still think it's a positive since we didn't lose the series. We let ourselves down in the first innings of this match. Kudos to the bowlers again for leading the way. We made some strides in the series, but this test, the first innings really let us down. International cricket commentator Fazir Mohammed joins us to review what happened in this uh, test match. and. Disappointing for the wind is, uh, Faz. All they needed to do was avoid defeat in this test match. Uh, they lost an entire day and uh, most of another day, but still weren't able to, to hold on. Yes, and there was some rain uh, as well today. Uh, yeah. on the last to seven wickets had gone down. And I think the common denominator, I mean, there's no getting away from it. Craig Brathwood uh, could, could hardly avoid mentioning uh, the issue with the batting lands. And, and uh, the, the fact is that, look, the West Indies scrambled a, a one-wicket victory, credit to the, to the way they fought so extremely well with the last three wickets, especially, and that last wicket pair. But when you look at the capitulation this time around, I mean, routed in, in 50 overs in the first innings. Remember, the first innings only ended just after lunch on day four. And the West Indies still managed to lose the test match with an hour to spare and even with a bit of rain interruption. The combined total of the West Indies innings, two innings, was 132 overs. And it once again highlights, I, I take the point that Craig Rapid might be making, uh, that it's about the mindset. Uh, but when he says technically the West Indies can bat, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, because the numbers show a very different picture with the exception, most notably, of the series in Bangladesh, the home series against Sri Lanka on flat surfaces in Antigua. But when you're talking about one, pitches where the ball is doing something, and two, genuine fast bowling, uh, good quality fast bowling and, and an array of seamers and fast bowlers, the West Indies continue to be found wanting in that regard, so technically, I'm not sure that the West Indies are up to. Yeah, and to support the point that you've just made, in the last eight innings that the West Indies played Test cricket, they scored fewer than 170 total, six of those last eight innings, and that's pretty poor, isn't it? It, it has to be, and, and even if we want to argue, lads, that look, the conditions in St. Lucia were too heavily favoured for the bowlers, and South Africa have a really outstanding attack, if you want to say the same thing about Sabina Park for those two test matches and uh, again saying, well, you know, Pakistan, they have that history of outstanding fast, fast, medium bowlers, seamers, swingers and so on. You go back to India in the, the Caribbean, also at Sabina, uh, the West Indies, again, didn't get a better total than 222 across four innings against England in England. Uh, pandemic period, the West Indies again capitulated with, with four totals of 200 or less in New Zealand last year. Uh, the West Indies once more. Again, two totals in the hundreds, one, two hundred and something. So it's a common denominator, Lance. And, 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 and yeah, it's, uh, there's no getting away from it. The West Indies batting, you look at the, the players' overall numbers, and Kruma Bonner and Kyle Mayers, their numbers are coming back down from that fantastic start they had in Bangladesh, followed by Sri Lanka. And uh, the question has to be asked, is it something about our conditions, is it about the player's application, is it about the, uh, the quality of bowling that they're facing, what, what are the factors, because it is a common denominator. Yeah, and Pat, speaking about common denominators, you know, when we did the preview, you spoke about how inconsistent the Pakistan have been as well, you know, Pakistanis have been as well, because you, you said, you know, these are two teams that we really couldn't judge clearly as we could have judged other teams based on their inconsistencies. Now we see, you know, the Pakistanis since 2005, 2011 and now 2021, every time the Windies took a one-match lead against the Pakistanis, the Pakistanis were able to bounce back 
back and of course draw the series so is it becoming a habit for the windies where pakistan is concerned i think you're always going to get these sorts of situations with the west indies and pakistan two very unpredictable teams i mean they were three wickets down for two runs at the start of this test match and were able to recover and and, and overall you're talking about two teams with a lot of uh, ability not all of it proven ability as far as the long term but we've seen it in, in bits and pieces with a lot of our west indian players in the batting lineup but you, you talk about someone like a Shaheen shah freedy uh, and, and his bowling in this test match it was truly outstanding you're talking about a 21 year old and you would hope that the likes of Jaden seals and others for all the praise that he would have gotten in that first test match would have looked at the perseverance of someone like a Shaheen Shah Afridi and, and even Muhammad Abbas uh, who didn't pick up a whole heap of wickets but he was a constant threat. You look at Hassan Ali picking up key wickets and even today Norman Ali the left arm spin hardly had anything to do in the test match yet he picked up three important wickets. So it, it's about the combination of things Mariah. It's about yeah. a situation where Pakistan even with the frailties of their batting, their batting at the top is almost useless with their openers. Um, so, so essentially, you're talking about two very unpredictable teams, but one winning one, one winning the other seems to be a pattern, as you mentioned. And I start thinking that, you know, in test cricket, our batsmen, they lack confidence. I get the sense, and I'm saying this based on the short selections that we've been seeing, the manner in which they've been dismissed. It's as if they don't even believe that they can stand there and bat out a day or bat out a certain number of overs. Do you get the same feeling? I hear you on that, Mariah, but they've, they've done it before. Uh, if we want to talk about building on something, look at earlier this year, I confidently said the West Indies would lose 2-0 in Bangladesh. They didn't. They won 2-0. And they, they fought well in the They got 400 in the, in the second inning, in the second test match in the first inning. They got nearly 400 to win famously with Kyle Mayers with that double century. And Kruma Bonha got 100 against Sri Lanka in Antigua batting through the last day to save the test match, uh, scores of over 300. Uh, of course, Craig Brathwaite, 100 and almost another 100 in the second innings of that second test. So if they couldn't get confidence from that, I, I don't know what else they, they need to get because you are not going to get pitches in South Africa, in Australia, in England, where there are feather beds. There's going to be movement through the air. There's going to be movement off the pitch. Mm -hmm. There's going to be bounce and if you are struggling struggling against genuine quick bowling and really wanting again that that message has been transmitted around the world many times over so you can expect the western is wherever we go certainly playing test cricket that you're going to face a lot of chin music all along the way yeah we've got to leave it here Faz. but you know what is a little bit worrying for us as west indies fans is where do we go from here because there's a lot of criticism about the current players now but the ones on the outside who who are not in this current team um the shamar brookses shea hopes john campbell and so on darren bravo their their batting averages are pretty poor bravo i think is 36 plus but his recent red ball you know performances haven't inspired confidence either so um, when you look ahead, you, you wonder where the selectors go from here. And that's the point, Lance, very quickly, because I, I know you're going to get a whole heap of voice notes and social media with their buzz with cussing these players and saying so-and-so should be played. Look at their numbers, as you correctly said. Look at their numbers and you can see that we are facing a, a crisis when it comes to quality batsmanship in the Caribbean. It's as simple as that. Yeah, we go to break fast. Thanks for talking to us as usual. Yeah, back with more on the zone after this.